Today I have this Victorian clock that needs an inspection and an evaluation. The case is made of alabaster, a fine-grained, translucent form of gypsum. A few chips and scuffs here and there. A break here that has been repaired. Alabaster is often carved and fashioned into ornaments, tombs, and clock cases. It's a rare eight-day French mantel clock dating back to around Napoleon III, the Second French Empire. Original tooling marks on the bottom of the base, and it looks like a couple of letters were scratched in later. These round, dark, stained spots are where four feet were mounted at one time. It's a highly sought after design. Dates to possibly sometime around 1870. The clockworks have come to me in several boxes. A cast metal ornament. It's a musical instrument finial. Here the casting has been trimmed to fit the contour of the case. A square cut fastener. This irregular seam line in the casting. It's probably there from a crack that was in the casting when it was poured. Fits nicely on the top. front bezel, and back mounting plate. There's no glass or back cover on this clock because originally it was mounted under a glass dome. The pendulum on this clock is a hollow casting of a cupid, most likely pop metal. The finish on it looks like gold paint. Rate adjustment screw here. Mantle clocks usually have pendulums that swing from side to side. This one is unusual because it swings front to back. The Second French Empire was famous for producing some of France's most famous cultural works of art, such as this one. Very nice enameled chapter ring with Roman numerals. The mainspring looks new. Blued steel burgette style hands. Several suspension springs. Some miscellaneous parts. The winding key. Movement looks fairly intact. I'll start with the movement and see what we have to work with here. Serial number of 822 on the front plate. These shiny areas are where the gold gilt is intact. The dark spots is the raw brass that has been oxidized. Most of the gold gilt is missing. Back plate is missing a lot of the gold gilt as well. The exposed brass is heavily oxidized.
matching serial number to the front plate. Not sure what this 38 signifies. And here, there's a skeleton key symbol stamped in the plate. These words here are French, and they mean escapement patented. This trademark shield of an eagle holding an anchor or double arrow and the letters FOT belong to the maker named Eugene Fargo. The crutch is a little loose on its shaft. Click spring looks to be handmade. Click spring screw. Ratchet wheel is in good shape. wheel looks to have been gold gilt at one time. Minute wheel has a four stamped on it. Cannon pinion. Mainspring arbor needs a bushing in the plate. Second wheel needs bushings. Could use a bushing here as well. Fingerprint damage, more fingerprints, fingerprints here. And here as well. These scratches indicate the plate was hand cut and finished with files. The plates on this movement are made from cast brass. Just what you'd expect to find on a movement this old. It would have been cut and hand worked. Using a similar frame saw such as this made from hickory, steel, and twine. Here's another frame saw made of all steel. This is a small keyhole saw made of soft maple and steel. These were the tools of a clockmaker back when this movement was made. A cold brass repair from some time in the past. Loose pivot hole here. Needs a bushing here. Excess play in the mainspring arbor and second wheel can cause binding on these French movements. Mainspring barrel has a lot of side to side movement. It should have bushings installed. It's allowing the barrel to tilt into the second wheel pinion, causing friction. This is Fargo's patented double escape wheel chaff cutter right angle escapement. It provides a front to rear motion of the pendulum. 
You don't see these two escape wheel movements very often. It has a half circle verge that moves front to back and alternately catches each escape wheel tooth. Fargo clocks of this type are very desirable and well worth restoring properly. From what I understand, he was the person who first came up with the design of making a pendulum swing back to front rather than side to side. Escape wheel teeth are skipping across the pallets. Depthing on the pallets is too shallow. Escape wheel teeth are hitting the impulse surface of the pallets. They should be hitting the locking surface. Needs a bushing here. These pits indicate a cast brass piece, a matching four stamp. Someone has cut this pin for some reason, maybe attempting to change the depthing of the escape wheels. More pits. Two holes here that have been plugged for some reason. Fingerprint damage on the inside of the plate. Second wheel. Third wheel. Nice, another matching four stamp. Barrel needs to be bushed. The seam where the two pieces of brass were soldered for the barrel. Teeth are in good shape. Matching serial number on the barrel cap and barrel. Someone has cleaned this. Barrel hook is nice and snug. These bearing surfaces are scored. They should be polished. Arbor hook is in good shape. Almost looks like this was finished with coarse sandpaper at one time. square winding shaft is rolled over. This is caused by using a key that's too big. Given time, the square shaft will need to be replaced. Hand tooling marks on the minute wheel. and another matching four stamp. Indexing tool marks here. Probably when the gear teeth were cut. Two inspection scribe marks left behind from the person making the gear cuts. Second wheel pinion is in good shape. This pivot is heavily scored should be dressed or re-pivoted. Probably ran for years without any servicing. Rust pit damage, but it's serviceable. Escape wheel teeth are actually in good shape. 
The half circle verge palette is worn. Dust on the escape wheel teeth has worn the contact surfaces. Best to deal with this last. It'll probably work okay once the rest of the movement is restored. Taking a closer look at the escape wheel cock, you can see where the two holes were plugged. The mounting hole has been egg shaped. Possibly attempting to increase the depth of the escape wheel teeth to the pallet. Pivot hole looks like it was tightened up by using a hollow punch on the back side. The cock for the pallet arbor. It's also made from cast brass and has a matching four number on it. I've assembled the clock, applied a little hand pressure to the main wheel just to see how it runs. It runs for about a minute, but quickly stops due to all the wear in the movement. The movement will need the pivots reworked and bushings installed, then set up correctly in order for it to operate again. I'll contact Richard and see how he wants to move forward on this nice alabaster Fargo clock.